Okay, in this movie I want to take a look at time scale and steps per frame. Very important concepts to understand in dynamics. So I'm going to create a real simple scene here. Let me just go into the right view, grab one of my drawing tools, and just lay a few points down here. Something like that. I'm going to take this, just kind of straighten this up. Just going to try and put something together here that we can have some spheres rolling around on. So I'm going to take this sphere, go into my object mode here. I'm going to hold Control or Command for Mac down and click on the extrude nerves. I don't want that going in the Z. I want it going in the X. So we'll just pull this out. Let's say 2000. That should be fine. It's probably way more than enough. I'm probably going to have to make this a little taller. So I'll take this and just pull that up. And take this one and pull it out. Now I'm going to take and drop a sphere in the scene. Pull that over here and scale it down. Pull that up. And now I'm going to add a cloner to the sphere. Now don't worry too much about this right now. We'll talk about this in a later chapter. But for now, I'm going to grab MoGraph, hold Alt or Option down, and click on Cloner. And it's going to put this object underneath the cloner. Now for the mode of the cloner, I'm going to go from Linear to Grid Array. So it does something like that. And I think the spheres are still a little big. Make them smaller. And I'm going to go something like 5, 5, and 5. And then we will adjust the size a bit in the X, Y, and Z. All right, so now we've got this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these things fall. So I'm going to need to come over here and put a rigid body tag on here. And under the rigid body tag for collision, I need to go to apply to children. And for the individual elements, select all. And we'll need to put a collider body on this one, that's the object that the spheres are going to fall on. And we'll need to change that from automatic to static mesh. So now, if we click play, get our ball is just sort of falling and rolling off, which is what one would expect. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's change our timeline from 90 to 300 so we have more frames to look at. Let's pull that out. So that's what we've got. Now, if we hit Control or Command D and go to the Project Settings, we can come over here to Dynamics, and we have this time scale. Now, right now it's set at 100%, so all the dynamics are working normally as you would expect. But if we take this to a much lower number, we can get slow motion effects, or we can actually even stop the dynamics completely. Likewise, if we take it to numbers over 100, we can get very speedy animations. So let me show you how this might work. Let's say that these fall, and at 60, we want them to start slowing down, and by 80, we want them to stop. Let's say by 120, they'll still be stopped, and from 120 to 160, we'll take them up to 300%. I'm going to go over here to 60, and I'm going to set a keyframe, and then I'm going to go to 80. Let's go to 80. Let's go one more forward, and we'll take this to 0. We'll set a keyframe, and we'll let that go to 120, set another keyframe, and then from 120 to 160, we'll take this back up to 300%. Set a keyframe. So let's go back to the beginning and see what happens. 60, they slow down to a complete stop, stay there, and then they start going crazy. That is the time scale. If we wanted something that was even more obvious, we could take this to, say, 600%. Set a keyframe. Go back to the beginning. Click Play. Click Stop. So that's the time scale. Let's take a look at, let's just create a new file here. Let's take a look at steps. So let's just create something very simple here. A plane, we're going to put a simulation tag on there, collider body, and let's take out another primitive, something like this. We'll scale it down. I'm going to move this up 
and back over here. And again, I'm going to put a cloner on here by holding Alt or Option, selecting the cloner object. Again, we'll set the mode to grid array. Let's do something like 5, 5, and 5. And I'm going to go ahead and put a rigid body tag on this. Again, I want it to apply to children, all of them. And if we click play now, everything just falls, which is what you would expect. I'm going to select this tag, come over to my dynamics, click on custom initial velocity. And I want these to be thrown in the negative x direction, this way, over here. So in order to do that, I'm going to type in here negative 500. I'm also going to make this plane just a little bit bigger. Again, Control or Command D, go to the project settings, and we have in the expert our steps per frame. Right now it's set at 5. If we throw those forward, everything goes well. Let me just take this down to 1 so that you can see what's going to happen. You see, we have a lot of these escaping down here. Now, for something very simple like this, that's not a big deal, but you will get into situations where your animations, or I should say your objects, are penetrating, and that's an issue. So if you ever have that problem, you just come over here to your steps per frame, jack that up, and then everything's working normal again. The one downside to this is the higher you raise this number, the longer your animations or the calculations will take for your dynamics. Okay, so that's time scale and steps per frame here in Cinema 4D.